Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to DJ Danity's Lockdown Pub Quiz number six. Number six, how do we get through so many? Well, here we are again. It's Tuesday night, it's 8 p.m., and I'm about to broadcast live to the world a pub quiz that I've put together during the week, and I hope you enjoy it. If you've never joined us before, welcome along. This is your first time here, so uh, noobs, you are more than welcome. And for all you regulars, I appreciate you guys being here. I'm just going to go ahead and refresh my screen on my separate tab here because I would like to be able to click on on the live stream there it is there I'll be able to see your comments because your comments now will appear down at the bottom and I'll be able to see them so happy days that's good there's a bit of a delay but uh, it doesn't matter as long as I can read your comments that's the main thing all right well while everybody's getting situated and logging in uh, I'll just waffle for a few minutes and tell you a few things about the pub quiz especially for those you've never been here before uh, there's been a few changes uh, some good changes you'll be pleased to hear uh, we are now doing shout outs which is great so later on I'm gonna get you to any birthdays anybody celebrate anything anybody just get divorced Woo -hoo! You let me know, and I'll, I'll give it a wee shout out uh, over over the air. Obviously, the air, the air. Listen to me, DJ. Huh? Uh, we also are doing um, uh, prizes. That's the new thing. That is new for this week. Now, it's not 100% finalized what way we're going to do it. I have an idea in my head based on the comments that you guys have been doing on my Facebook page. So we'll talk about the, a, bit, a bit about that later on. But we do have some prizes. I think I, we should be able to work out a way to do it. So, uh, so yes, stick around for that later on. That's going to be a good one. Uh, also, we are doing the hashtag My Life Stories. This is great. It's, they're very short. They're not very long. We'll take up too long. Um, but basically, for those of you who don't know, my dad and I, we traveled the world for 11 years from 1975 to 1986, traveling all through Europe, ended up in America and Hawaii and living in California for most of it. And some crazy things happened along the way, man. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. And I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, every week I give a couple stories and then you guys can vote which one you want. Uh, we still have the airplane story. The airplane story. No one's picking the airplane story enough to go. You keep going for the second story, but we'll see. Maybe this is the week for the airplane story. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, also, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody that has sent me a little something through on PayPal to encourage me to keep doing this. It means a lot because this dinner table right here is where your money is putting food right here in this current situation that we all finding ourselves locked down. Times are tight. They are. And a lot of us have been reduced down to zero income. So everything you guys are sending me is really doing me well. I really do appreciate that. I'm not going down to the boozer and boozing up on a Saturday night with it. No, it's buying food and it's on this table and it's feeding my wife and my son Jackson and myself. So thank you very much for my family to yours. I really do appreciate that. Every little bit helps. And it's all adding up. So I do really appreciate that. Um, what else we got? First of all, I'm going to ask you to do something I've never asked you to do before. Uh, this is something new. I've noticed a lot of live streamers doing it. Can you press the share button? on the bottom of your screen. There's a share button down there. Just hit it, send it off to your page, and it means that all your friends, if they say it, they go, oh, let's join in. And maybe no, you might be competing against your neighbors or your best friends or some family distant relatives you haven't spoke to in years. But if I could ask you to hit the share button, I'd like to see what that does to the to the live stream this week. There should be a button down there at the bottom of the page. Yeah, there, the bottom left-hand corner. It just says share. Just go ahead and hit that. I appreciate that. Well, let's see how this, that works this week. I'm curious. Also, if anybody from your friends list, I think, then clicks on it and watches, their name will come up and it will say their name is watching with you which is kind of cool then you go oh look there's Kelly oh there's Fred you know so uh, it's something a bit different something a bit different okay so let's go ahead and kick it off so those of you who've never played before you are watching the live stream this is where I read out the questions I have them here but you need the answer sheet if you don't have the answer sheet I'll tell you how to get it you need a second phone or a second device, one that you're not watching this live stream on, and you use that one to go to my Facebook page, uh, scroll past the live stream, stream, and the post directly beneath the live stream, the one I posted up just before I went live, is a link to the answer sheet. Uh, so if you go and click on that now with a second device, it will bring you up a multiple choice answer sheet, and that's what you're gonna be doing to answer the quiz. Uh, I'll be reading out a question, you'll have maybe four four answers to go ahead and click the one you want, and then scroll on to the next one, so on, so on, to we get to the end and the beauty about these answer sheets as well these multiple choice answer sheets is that they they give you the answer sorry they'll give the answer they give you the score at the end of the pub quiz as soon as you submit it and that's it it's done uh, I get a copy of it so I can see which ones you did well and bad on and stuff and it helps me mold it for future reference but it also gives you your score then and there and I'm gonna ask you to post up that score in the comments when you get it at the end of the quiz um, so yeah and oh and the answers actually will be there as well once you get your score you're, all the answers every single one the ones you missed long be there so you can debate with your your teammates and your house I told you it was B I told you you can have that domestic fight after the pub quiz <laughs> put some bets on it put some bets on it no you're vacuuming for the week uh-huh uh-huh so uh so yeah don't do that 
I'd rather do that. <laughs> so that's for the answer sheet. So go get that. Make sure you've got two devices, one to watch a live stream, one with the answer sheet. That's how this pub quiz works. If you're watching on YouTube, this has been recorded live on Facebook. So any interaction I do with the comments, that's nothing to do with YouTube anymore. This is now, we're a Facebook live stream, but this is on YouTube. I'll be uploading it later. So if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome along. The link to the answer sheet is in the description of the video. You're welcome to play along. It works just as normal. Just ignore everything else I'm talking about. Okay, uh, we're gonna ask you regarding the answer sheet. When you get to the bottom of every round, you're gonna hit next, takes you onto the second round. You will then see a back button, which takes you back. Never click that back button, I'll tell you why. If you do it, sometimes it erases all your answers. Everything you've just done for the previous round, gone. And you're like, oh, try and find and you remember what they were. And trust me, it's hard, it's hard. So don't hit the back button, whatever you do. We're always going in a forward direction. Don't go back. We can't go back, man, don't go back. Um, I'm gonna ask you again for no Googling. Uh, there's no worth, no, no point cheating. There's no prizes for coming first, second, or third. I can confirm that now. We are not doing prizes for first, second, and third. I have prizes, but we're going to talk a bit later on on how we're going to get those out. But there won't be for the top three scoring teams, or two, or one. So cheating is not going to get you anywhere. And there's no point anyway. It's a hollow victory. So just, just play along. See how well you get. The maximum score is 58. There's 58 questions. We'll be through them in 60 minutes. And see how well you do. If you get in the 50s, genius, genius. Uh, if you're in the 40s that's still a very very good area to be in 30s it's still a good score because i mean come on you're you're, you're going to get a, a big chunk of these so it's a challenge against yourself so nothing worth cheating for you with me you with me no google i'm watching i'm not watching really but i'm watching <laughs> all right uh what else we got before we kick underway uh don't write up the answers in the comments uh, i think most of you know that already but some people come and join halfway through the quiz go oh, i know the answer to that and they type it up so if you see any of that quickly say don't put the answers in the comments in case i miss it here and i'm not able to tell them but yeah don't put any comments up in or any answers up in the comments of this live stream and finally, that's it. We're going to kick it off now. But first, I'm going to ask you for your team names. Yes, I need your team names. Put them in the comments right now. What are you calling yourselves? Uh, what, what's team name? What are you going to come up with? Come up with it. Look, look at your friends. Look at your family. And just off the top of your head, what do you can think of? But I am going to ask you, don't use any bad language. Any, no bad words in your team name, please. Uh, a lot of families playing. A lot of children playing along with their families. My mom, my stepdad are playing. And don't get me in trouble. Please don't get me in trouble. So take it nice and easy. And don't, uh, don't be going nuts, all right? <laughs> please don't get me in trouble. All right, so team names are coming through. I can see some of them are popping up here. Team Ferris is here. COVID-19. <laughs> Too soon, bro. Too soon. Uh, we've got Let's Get Quizzical. The Geek Army are here. Whitley Wanderers. I can see a lot of team names coming up now, which is great. So happy days. Uh, Professor Quizwitty. Why does that sound familiar to me? Is it like something from Transformers? Ooh, it is. It's something for... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, three Smarties and a Tuber here. Ooh, that's fancy. All right, folks. Enough team, rating, team name reading. I will do some later on, but let's go ahead and get started with this pub quiz. So you should have entered your email address. Uh, you should have entered your email address by now in the answer sheet to obviously get started with it. And make sure it's a good one. Make sure it's a legitimate email address. If you have put in something like Mickey Mouse at DonaldDuck.com, uh, later on, go back and hit the link again and submit a decent address, a, a genuine one. The reason being is every week, uh, about Friday or so, I send out an email to all you guys telling you what all the rounds are gonna be in next week's quiz. It's a big, big advantage. You gotta take advantage of that. I'll not spam you, not selling your email addresses off, but make sure it's a legitimate one. So if you haven't put one in for this one, when you're done and you've submitted it, just go back, click the link again, and give me an email address. All right, folks, this is it. You should be looking at round number one. General knowledge is always where we start. So let's go ahead and kick it off. After each question, I will read out the multiple choice answers. So if for any reason you're playing along and you're at home and you're just pen and paper in it, you're gonna have to Google them all, mind you, because you don't have the answer sheet. Uh, but at least with these options, to give you a bit of a head start. And then I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna be quiet for maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds or so. I'll read some of your comments. I'll go through your team names and that'll give you time to think about the question. All right, enough waffling for me. And he waffles, doesn't he? He does, he does. But let's go ahead and get started. And thank you very much for joining us. 92 teams, that's amazing. Well done, thank you. All right, question number one. You can see the options there are dress, gun, vehicle, or a mistake. Here's the question. What is a blunderbuss? What is a blunderbuss? Is it a dress, a gun, a vehicle, or a mistake?
All right, Mark, uh, Mark Hall is just posted up there. Is it just me who is getting fuzzy voice sounds? Anyone else hearing fuzzy voice sounds? I have a microphone here. Let me just tell me if this is working. Did you hear those taps? If you did, say you heard the taps, please, because that means the microphone is connected and it's working. If it's not connected, then I'll be using the microphone on the phone. So let me know if you heard those taps. I'll do it again. Tell me if you heard those taps. We comment up there. And I'll read out question number two. Question number two, in America, what sport does the NFL relate to? Is it netball, football, hockey, or basketball? In America, in America, what sport does the NFL, that's N for November, F for Foxtrot, L for Lima, NFL relate to? Is it netball, football, hockey, or basketball? Excellent. You guys can hear the mic. I'm glad this is working. I'm glad this is working. Hopefully it should be a little clearer because there's like a, there was an echo the last time. All right. Question number three. Question number three. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to say spaghetti first because the only way I'm going to get this right. Spaghetti. Spaghettini. Spaghettini is spaghetti that is what? Your options. Long, short, twisted, or thin. Spaghettini. Spaghetti, spaghettini, yes. It's, sound, it's roughly like sounds the same, but there's a teeny at the end. Spaghettini is spaghetti that is what? Long, short, twisted, or thin? Michael Hayden has just joined us. I think you've missed a question. Uh, Katie, Th I'll read those out in a second. Katie Thompson, how do you get the answer sheet? You go to my Facebook page with a second phone or a second device, and you look for the post directly beneath this live stream and the answer sheet's there. The, the post just says the answer sheet. You click on that and it'll bring up the answer sheet. It's a multiple choice answer sheet. Get that as quick as you can because we're, we're only a few questions in and I can repeat it. I'll, at the very end, I'll actually go through the first three just to make sure. Okay, thanks for your help, guys. I, I see you're posting up replies to these people, which is great. Thank you. Okay, uh, so yes, yeah, someone else was missing some questions. We'll, we'll go through the, the first three at the end of this round. Okay, so we're on question number four now. Question number four. This is a simple yes or no. Simple 50-50. If you don't know, just take a guess. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Do female reindeer have antlers? Yes or no? Do female reindeer have antlers? Liz Crawford, I see you say, Charlene, you should play. Uh, if you're talking to my wife, Charlene, she can't play because I run the quiz past her <laughs> to make sure I haven't made any mistakes or to see if it's a balanced quiz or it's too hard. She's my she's my, my guinea pig, my buffer between me and you guys. So she can't play because she knows all the answers now. She did really well on this one too. So that, that's a good sign. That's a good sign that it's an easy one. All right, let's move on. Question number five. Question number five. You have some countries, England, France, Switzerland, or Germany. The question... Which country produces, now before I say it, probably a lot of countries are going to make this, but it's known especially from coming and being from one of these particular co countries the most, all right, or where maybe it was originated, origi originated from. Hatu, spit the brick out. Here's the question again. Which country produces camembert cheese? Camembert cheese. Is it England, France, Switzerland, or Germany? Which country produces camembert cheese? Sorry, Liz. <laughs> Seeing that now, you're a different Charlene. Different Charlene. <laughs> oh, it's, I see it's frozen again. Okay, I see a, a couple of you said that it's frozen. I don't know what, or the, or the, 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 the stream is freezing. Um, I'll, I'll continue through it. If you've missed any questions, just type up here, uh, missed question, and put the number. If any of you can remember what that question is, feel free to type it out for them, if you can remember or what it was about. Um, that would be grateful, helpful, because I might not always see that someone says that it's frozen and missed one. So if it froze for you, and I do apologize if it has, no idea why. Don't know if it's my internet or yours, but uh, hopefully it should be yours, <laughs> not mine. But if you, if you missed a question, just say, what was question number? And someone hopefully will reply to you. If I see it, I'll do it for you. All right, we're moving on to question number six now. Question number six. Which airport is the busiestest, the busiestest, 
I'm going to start over again. There's something wrong with me today. Which airport is the busiest airport in the world and has been number one for 20 odd years? Is it Heathrow, JFK, LAX, which is in Los Angeles, or Atlanta International Airport? They're all international airports. Which airport is the busiest airport in the world and has been number one for 20 odd years? Heathrow, JFK, LAX, or Atlanta? Janice Drickus. That's a name I haven't heard in a while from the drifting scene. He had that, what's it, it's an orange BMW estate all done up like the General Lee. Do -do 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 Janice, why aren't you playing, my friend? My old friend, why aren't you playing? And I hope you're still driving the General Lee. All right, let's move on. Question number seven. Question number seven. What has been considered to be the most famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci? Is it The Last Supper? Salvatore Mundi, St. John the Baptist, or the Mona Lisa? What has been considered to be the most famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci? All the experts agree this is the one. Is it The Last Supper, Salvatore Mundi, St. John the Baptist, or the Mona Lisa? Yes, I have been out in the sun too long. Can you tell? It's not fake, baby. It's not fake. <laughs> All right, folks, time for the final question of this round, and then I'm going to go with the first three very quickly. Uh, if, well, if you're good and you're happy with all of your answers, just go ahead and hit the next button at the bottom after this question. But uh, if you'd like me to read out, if you'd like to hear the first three, stick around. I'm going to do the first three. All right, question number eight. In one word, what is biology, the science of? Is it life, humans, religion, or earth? In one word, what is biology the science of? Life, humans, religion, or earth? If you're happy with all your questions and all your answers, go ahead and hit next at the bottom, and it'll take you to round number two. You can sit there and wait for me, uh, and I will then go over the first three questions now for the latecomers, so very, very quickly. Question number one, what is a blunderbuss? What is a blunderbuss? You have your options there. Question number two, in America, what sport does the NFL relate to? That's NFL, N for November, F for Foxtrot, L for Lima, NFL. Question number three, spaghettini is spaghetti that is what? Spaghettini is spaghetti that is what? Now, I think that should pretty much cover it. No one's asking for any more of the questions. So hopefully I think that's all up and ready to go. So go ahead and hit the next button at the bottom. It should take you round number two. Um, before we do that, uh, we are going to kick off with shouts out, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time of the night. If someone is celebrating anything at all, and I mean anything good or bad, okay, okay, I want you to put them up here on the answer sheet, or on the, on the answer sheet, on the, on the comments, put them up, you got a birthday, you put it up there, anybody celebrating getting hitched, ooh, someone get married in, in lockdown, did that happen, or maybe got divorced, separated, are you happy being single, whoop, whoop, whatever the occasion is, put it up here, or if it's someone you just want to say hey to living far, far away, and you miss them, and you know they're watching, then go ahead and give me a wee shout out in the comments section of this live feed and I will start reading some out if there's here do we have any uh, oh someone's asking what was question number one again question number one was what is a blunderbuss Katie what is a blunderbuss all right do we have any shouts out I'm getting no shouts out I know there's a delay but there's nobody celebrating a birth oh here we go celebrating my first lockdown haircut <laughs> Sean I'm sure that went really well I had to cut my own man can you tell can you tell uh, celebrating first lockdown haircut well done Sean uh, Lindsay says handed my notice in and have a new job next month can't wait whoop whoop Lindsay congratulations hope you enjoy it um, and that's it that's all I got <laughs> there's no huge shout outs this week is there I'm sure they'll come through, and when they do, I'll come back to them. But let's go ahead and start round number two then. Round number two, uh, as you can see, it says Animal Mythbusters. Animal Myth... myth, myth yes, I've been out in the sun too long. Okay. 
It's the Animal Mythbusters round, ladies and gentlemen. Now, all of these questions are 50-50. They're either yes or they're no. Or I think there's one of them that isn't yes or no. It's a couple other answers. But pretty much they're all yes or no. And it's up to you to decide what I tell you. Is it true? Yes, it's true. Or nope, 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 nope. That's a myth. That's ridiculous. All right, so let's check out these questions. And I wish you the best of luck. And let's go ahead and kick it off. Question number one. Does a duck's quack echo? Does a duck's quack echo? Yes or no? Does a duck go quack? And that's it. Doesn't matter where he is. Nothing else is coming out of it. Or is it quack, 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 quack? Good question. Robert Wilston. Hey, Robert. Robert Wilston. Hello from your old chum. Got our kids in bed at a normal time. That's worth celebrating. Celebrating not murdering Jimmy. <laughs> it happens in lockdown. She's tried to kill me twice. Twice. <laughs> Mark Hall. Three out of four of the family used the toilet properly today. Yay. <laughs> Celebrations. Shout out to my partner Nadine. Expecting our daughter in September. Oh, James. Congratulations. Congratulations. Loves. Loves. All right. Question number two in the Animal Mythbusters round. Are lemmings suicidal? Yes or no? Are lemmings suicidal? Yes or no? Liz Crawford celebrating a 33rd wedding anniversary. 33 years, you stuck it together? Congratulations, what's your secret? What's your secret? Uh, Willie Crawford is the best hubby in the world. Ah, stop it. Oh, getting some feedback? Okay, yeah, my wife just came in and let me know the broadcast was interrupted, so there was a bit of a cutoff there. Uh, so I don't know why it's doing this. I don't know why. I mean, there's, there's nothing in here that should be doing this. The, my router's working, internet's fine, we're getting good, good megabytes per second. I'm quite happy with it, so I don't understand why it's freezing. But uh, if it froze on you, yeah, I can see Lay said it's frozen. If it's frozen on you, all you have to do is just say, what was question number? and whack up the number and if someone knows they'll they'll put it in the comments if not if i see it i'll read it out again i'm sorry it's freezing no idea why all right we're going to move on to question number three hopefully you've got the first two if not we'll come back to them just put in the comments you want to hear them again but question number three do ostriches stick their heads in the sand when scared do ostriches you know the birds big funny looking round things with a big neck and a head do they put their head down underneath the sand when they're scared yes or no Lockdown birthday wishes to Conan, coming in from Stephanie. Conan, hope you're watching. Holly, gone off the air. I hope I'm back. I'm breaking the internet with this quiz. I see your comments. Happy birthday, Conan. Another one. Sorry about the breakups. <laughs> Just going through a rough patch, man. It's terrible. All right, question number four. The only not yes or no question. You can see you have a couple of weird options there. Turtle versus tortoise. You ready for this? Which one lives in the sea? Turtle or tortoise? Which one lives in the sea? <laughs> she is, Lindsay. Smarter than me. Very smarter than me. If you missed any questions, just... Ask what question, what was question number? Put it up there if you've missed any. Question number five. Question number five. Is a koala actually a bear? Yes or no? Is a koala actually a bear? Yes or no? Hannah missed question number three. That must have been when I was freeze, when I froze. Question number three. Question number three was, do ostriches stick their heads in the sand when scared? Yes or no? That was question number three. Congratulations to Soph, who got out of the bed before 11 today. Yay! Up and at him. The crack of 11. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like that. All right, let's move on. Question number six. Question number six. You've probably all heard these, but some of them are myths. Some of them aren't. You're just going to have to, or maybe they're all, maybe they're not. Ah! Question number six. 
Will a mother bird abandon its baby bird if it's touched or handled by a human? Yes or no? Will a mother bird abandon its baby bird if it's touched or handled by a human? Yes or no? Got some new people watching. Luke Maloney, Stuart, Damien. Hi, guys. Welcome along. You need the answer sheet. If you're here from 8 o'clock, the answer sheet, it's on my page. You can go get it now if you want to. It's on, it's in a post directly below, below the live feed. You click on it. It's multiple choice. And we're on round number two at the moment. So you haven't missed very much. Just quickly do some random answers for number one and go straight on to number two. You can catch up. You can play along. Why not? Nothing to lose. Stuart Adelsman celebrating his six-hour afternoon nap. What? I only get five, man. Lucky, lucky Stuart. All right, moving on, moving on. Question number seven. Question number seven. Does the color red attract bulls or encourage them to attack? Yes or no? Does the color red actually attract bulls or encourage them to attack? Yes or no? Elizabeth, you talking to me or Stuart? All right, folks, time for the final question. Don't forget, type up if you've missed any. If you need another question, right out again. Type it up now because I'm done with this one. We're going to move on to the next round. Uh, final question. You swallow at least 10 spiders in your sleep every year. Yes or no? Mmm, tasty. Daddy long legs. You swallow at least 10 spiders in your sleep every year. Yes or no? All right, folks, that's the end of the Animal Mythbusters round. Uh, if you're done with that one, go ahead and stick the, uh, go ahead and click next at the bottom, and we shall move on to the next round. What is the next round? Next round is, ooh, it's going to be a fun one. Go ahead and click over to it. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for hashtag my life stories. Oh, there's been some great ones. There's been some great stories. We've done Charlie Sheen, how I nearly killed him. Uh, what was the one we did last week? I forgot the one we did last week. There's just so many. But I know there, oh, it's the dog. Wasn't it the dog? Oh, the dog, the dog. You missed the dog story. This week, we are still offering up the airplane story, which I'll tell you about that in a second. And then I have a new one, and I'm going to ask you to vote very quickly up here. First one to get the 10, that's the one we're going to read out. Uh, so basically, you're going to either type in airplane or you're going to type in kidnap. All right, so the airplane story is basically about how I nearly crashed a 747 airliner. Wasn't a simulation. This is a real airplane. I near put it into the ground. Do you want to hear that story? Or do you want to hear the story about how I was actually kidnapped? <gasps> so go ahead, place your votes, ladies and gentlemen. Airplane or kidnap? That's all you've got to write down. I'm going to see them here. All right, so here we go. Oh, plane, 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 plane. Plane, plane, oh, one for kidnap, plane, kidnap, keep coming, coming, kidnap, oh, is it going to catch up, is it going to catch up, is it kid kidnap is on four, four to eight at the moment, it's four to eight, what's it going to be, oh, come on, come on, come on, don't vote again, don't vote twice, airplane, we're on nine for the airplane, one more for the airplane, ten, it's the airplane, finally, we get to tell the airplane story, sit back, grab your popcorn, this is going to last about 60 seconds, <laughs> it's not a long one, all right, so here we go. <laughs> How do you even start this one? It was 1976. My dad put me on an airplane with him, and we were flying to America. We were just we we're going off on a mad adventure over to the States. It was a 747 airliner. It's a big, big jumbo jet. And back then, this you know, pre-9/11 thing, access to the captain's cockpit not a problem. And my dad loved airplanes. He loved flying. And he wanted to show me the cockpit. I'm a six-year-old child, maybe six or seven, somewhere around there. And I'm seeing the well, cockpit for the first time. Of course he wants to share that with me. So he lifts me up and we, we walk up and ask the stewardess, yeah, sure, come on in. The door opens, not even locked. You know what I'm saying? Free times, free times. And we go in there and the captain's all, hey, buddy, how are you? You know, the usual banter type stuff. And uh, my dad asks, is okay, we come in. Yeah, we come in. Uh, the captain picks me up 
puts me on his knee. And he says, you hold on to that boy. And it's like a steering wheel with like the top bit and the bottom bit missing you know, for, for obviously flying the plane. But he's got it in autopilot. So that thing ain't moving. So he says, Go, hold on to that, son. Hold on to that. And then he turns sort of halfway around to speak to my dad behind him. He's got like a million and one questions. What this button do? What's this do? What's the elevation? Where are the ailerons? 101 million just baffling him. Um, so I'm sitting there and hold on to the steering wheel. And they're chatting away. Boring. I'm sitting there going, this is great, but I can't move it. It's stuck. It's stuck. And I tried really hard to move, but it wouldn't move. But I was determined, all right? So I put both hands on one side and trying to kind of just sit up a wee bit and push it down with all of my six-year-old body's might, the steering wheel turns. Now, in those airplanes back then, Yes, the steering wheel would get nice and firm and steady if it's an autopilot, but if you make any kind of a drastic maneuver that the pilot has to do very quickly, doesn't have time to turn off the autopilot, it overrides the autopilot. Uh, I'm pooping you not, right? This plane's starting to go like this. Everything's leaning over to one side. The captain grabs me, throws me over his shoulder. I'm like just this rag doll. My dad catches me. We both fall to the ground. He grabs it. The, the co-pilot grabs it, and they fight to bring it back. They said to me, we found out this later on, right? Uh, when we got to the airport and my dad was asking questions, or rather, he was being asked questions, uh, it were told that if it had gone another 15%, 10 15%, it would have been past the point of no return. That's how far I managed to jerk that down and get the plane moving before those two guys could get me off and fight it back. And that is how I nearly crashed a 747 airliner. Thank you. <laughs> Crazy times, right? Do you know what was the worst part though? Because I'm six, right? This is all just fun and games to me. I mean, yeah, I may bump my head whenever I was thrown back to my dad, but the, the worst bit was that walk of shame back to the seat. Can you imagine? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was embarrassing to say the least. My dad was mortified. But there you go. That's the airplane story. Thank you very much for voting for that one. That is now gone. We'll have a new one next week to add to the kidnap story. Mm. So yes. All right. Let's get back to the pub quiz. That was fun. I enjoyed it. I haven't told that story in a long time. All right, folks. You should be looking at question number three. Or sorry. Round number three, it's a family fortunes round. Yeah, damn it, come on down. Family fortunes, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, as you know, with all family fortunes, these were taken off the family fortunes website, their own website, and as per usual, 100 people were surveyed and they were looking for the top answer. So it's the answer that pops into their head the most. The most people out of 100 that say whatever that answer is, that's going to be the top answer. Now, if you look very quickly down it, but don't read the answers, but if you look very quickly, you'll see that there's only two answers. This is another 50-50 round, ladies and gentlemen. And basically, one of those answers is the top answer and one of those answers is the second to top answer. So yeah, they're close. They could be close or they might not be close, but it's still second. Now for this round, I am going to recommend that you, whoever's holding or looking at these answer sheets, don't look at the answers. Let me read out the question. See what pops into your mind first. Chances are what pops into your mind first is going to have a bigger chance of actually being the top answer. Now, you may be playing with a family of five. <laughs> you could have five different answers, but get the answers from everybody before you then look at the options. Don't let the options influence you. You've probably looked, already looked at the first one. Look away. Look away. Don't look, man. Don't look them in the eyes. Look away and just go with your instinct on this because nine out of ten times, it's going to be the first thing that pops into your head. All right. Remember, 100 people surveyed. It's going to be general. All right, so it's time. Round number three, the family fortunes question. Question number one, name the best way of showing someone you love them. Name the best way of showing someone you love them. What popped into your head? <laughs> yes, it was the incorrect answer noise. Sorry about that. That was the price is right, wasn't it? <laughs> Going back to your comments now. It froze again, Katie. No. I hope it didn't freeze during the story. I hope it didn't freeze during the story. Oh, it'd be heartbreaking if it did. All right, family fortunes number two. Don't look at the answers, remember. Don't look at the answers. First thing pops into your head. You ready for this one? Name a method of self-defense. Name a method of self-defense. Be specific. Yes, I'm on the no-fly list now. <laughs> Have you seen this boy? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, happy days, Katie. Thank you for that. All right, family fortunes number three. Clear your mind. Clear your mind. Everyone silence. Shh, clear your mind. First thing pops into your head. Apart from clothing, name something you put directly on your body. Apart from clothing, name something you put directly on your body. crazy this one right are the answers you're coming up in your head are they the answers that you see whenever you go to the question are they don't look at them first they'll influence you <laughs> not that I was trying to influence you <laughs> all right question number four you ready for this clear your mind clear your mind name a male relative name a, a male relative so not auntie or mother a male relative Stuart Adelson, what, what's the YouTube link to? Can you, can you type up? Tell me what that link's to, please. Are you hijacking my quiz? <laughs> number five, family fortunes number five. You ready? Clear your mind. Name someone who wears headphones. Name someone who wears headphones. All right, moving on. Number six. Number six. Name a type of alarm. Name a type of an alarm. I wonder if you're having arguments amongst yourself. No, it's this. No, it's that. Go with the democracy. Whoever got the... the... All right, number seven. Number seven. We're getting through these ones quite quickly. Name something you might wave at a football match. Name something you might wave at a football match. Ah, Stuart, got you now. <clears throat> Need the, <clears throat> the big X coming up. I've got you now. Yeah, that would have been quite good. <laughs> All right, time for the final one for the Family Fortunes round. Final one. Clear your mind. Don't look at the answers. Name something you wear that's made of metal. Name something you wear that's made of metal. All right, folks, that should be it. Go ahead and click next at the bottom. Remember, never click the back. Never go back to change your answers because your answers might have just disappeared, every single one of them. Don't go back. So go ahead and hit next. You should be looking at number four. It's our picture round. Before we get uh, started on the picture round, because I've got them all sitting here ready to go, um, I'm going to, I've am going to. i been sharing stories with you and things about my life. I would like to hear something from you, but specific. I would like to know, uh, has this ever come into your life? Have, did you ever own this when you were young? Look at the picture. Look at the picture on the back of that. How young does that little puppy dog look? That is a fresh-faced DJ Danny D right there. He's got to be, what, 21, if even somewhere. I don't even know how old that guy is, but he's very, very young. So basically, did this ever come into your life? If it did, I want you to tell me how old you were when you first got this. Were you a little teeny bopper or were you an old person like me? Uh, I also want to know, um, do you have any memories of what you did with this CD? Apart from throw it in the bin. I expect to read that. Mark Hall, he's going to put that there. Oh, it's a coaster now. Holds my drink. See, perfect, perfect. I want to know some, some, some stories. Oh, is there, is there a problem with the feed? Okay, thank you. 
uh, yeah, I'd like to know, uh, put in the comments if you have any kind of a memory of it whatsoever. Uh, and, um, and yeah, just, you know, did you play it loud? Did you play it at a party? Uh, any memories at all? What did you love about it? Anything. I just want to hear something about it. This is available on eBay. You can still get this on eBay, by the way. Just type in my name, DJ Danny D. Now, I've just been uh, informed by the boss that the family fortunes round, some people may have missed question number seven and eight. Uh, I think there was a little bit of freezing going on. I don't know. It could have just been my wife, Charlene. But remember, if it ever freezes, just write up, just type in the comments immediately, froze. Because as soon as I see that, I know there's a problem and I know to go over them. So very quickly, I'm going to go over family fortunes round number seven and eight. Hopefully you haven't already pushed on. <laughs> but it is a 50-50 one. So worst case scenario, if you have missed it, you can go back and if they did erase all your runs, it'll just be from that round. If it did erase them, you should be able to remember which ones you chose because it's a 50-50. But number seven was name something you might wave at a football match. And the answers were either a scarf or a flag. And the final one, number eight, was name something you wear that's made of metal. And your options were ring or watch. So there you go. You're welcome to hit back on that one. If you do lose your answers, it'll just be for that one round. You won't lose the previous ones. It's only when you click on the, the rounds, it sometimes wipes them. But uh, yeah, sorry, she just informed me that it might have froze a bit. All right, folks, so there you go. Let me hear your stories about Energy 106 and the DJ Danny D. Happy Hardcore CD. This was the big one for me. This was the one that went into HMV Virgin, had a barcode at the back of it. The royalties were paid. It was legit. This was legit. Uh, so yes, please let me know what any, any memories, any fond memories of the happy hard code disco land take me up 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 and away we are the children of the night oh it's just, it was my favorite all-time album ever ever all right folks it's time for round number four are you looking at the options you can look at the options now if you want to although there is a something to be said and this is another quiz guy brought this up with me during the week he says if you don't look at the answers on a multiple choice quiz and you just let the answers be formulated up here in your head you're more likely to find the right answer because whenever you look at options your brain kind of just Kind of, yeah, I don't need to work. I, I can go down to 60% processing power. I don't know how he's getting these analogies, but um, sometimes it's maybe a good idea not to look at the answers and just see what comes up in your head and then look down if it's there, bingo. But if it's not there, then you can go <gasps> and then look at them and take some guesses. All right, so this week it is a sports round, ladies and gentlemen. Last week people were asking for a sports round. We haven't had one in a couple of weeks, I think. So uh, yeah, let's do it. It's football tops, ladies and gentlemen. Have a look at that and tell me what football team wears that top hopefully it's clear enough for you i'll be able to see in a second it is i know it is a bit whited out but hopefully you can tell uh we're looking for is it england scotland wales or northern ireland pretty straightforward enough hopefully you should be able to get that one i can't see that one being too tough but you never know if you're like me and don't follow football at all <laughs> seriously san francisco 49ers all right that's my team <laughs> it's none of this <laughs> san francisco 49ers man joe montana go long go long oh, I'm, I'm i'm digressing all right so you got that one that was number one let's put that one out of the way we'll go on to number two all right number two here it is ladies and gentlemen what team wore that football top your options are germany ireland cameroon or atletico madrid what do you think what do you see what do you see huh are you a football pundit I'm supposed to not really talk in between the rounds, but I think this is an easy one. If you're into your football. If you're not, you're just taking a guess anyway. Oh, I'm getting some of those memories coming in. Thank you, guys. I'm going to look forward to reading those later on. Oh, Lindsay Montgomery. That's right. You were an Energy 106 dancer. Woohoo! I remember. I remember. All right. That one's gone. The green one is gone. Oh, come back at you. All right, a little smaller picture this time. Number three. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? This picture's a little smaller now. Apologize. Number three. You've got Liverpool, Brazil, Scotland, or Colombia. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? The name might help give it away. I don't know. Might, if you recognize the name. Liverpool, Brazil, Scotland, or Colombia. Who wore that? All right, let's take that one down. Take that one down. I hope you're into your football, and this is an easy one for you. And if you're not, well, one in four chance. One in four chance. All right, this is number four. Your options, Liverpool, England, Denmark, or AC Milan. What do you think? Liverpool, England, Denmark, or AC Milan. That's a red football top. Definitely red kind of hard to make out the logos but I did that purpose I didn't want to make it too clear all right let's take that one down 
Down she goes. Number five. A little bit bigger this time. Number five. Your options are Argentina, Inter Milan, Barcelona, or Sheffield United. What do you think that top is? You can just make out the logo and no more. You, I suppose you would need to be a fan of the team and then you'd probably recognize it. But you could probably eliminate some, you know, eliminate some. Argentina, Inter Milan, Barcelona, or Sheffield United. All right, number five is coming down. There's a total of 10. We're now moving on to number six. Number six, there she is. Number six, your options are Rangers, France, Tottenham Hotspur, or Brazil. Now remember, they could be away tops, could be, what's the opposite of away? Home. <laughs> See, I told you, no football, nada, zilts, zero. They kick a ball, right? Number six, so Rangers, France, Tottenham Hotspur, or Brazil. <laughs> All right, taking that one down. Da -da -da -da. Hope we're not going too fast for these. All right, number seven, another white one, but it's got some distinctive striping and colors on it. Number seven, you have Tottenham Hotspur again, Brazil, England, or Germany. What do you think? See, a lot of people have joined us late. Yep, the quiz starts at 8 o'clock if you've joined us late. And the answer sheet's always on my page, directly below the live feed. So just the next post down, it's a multiple choice answer sheet. All the answers that I'm giving out are on that multiple choice. You just got to click it and submit it, simple as. All right, taking down number 7, let's move on to number 8. Number 8, a red one. Number eight, Denmark, Spain, Liverpool, or AC Milan. What do you think? How are we discussing with your team about that? All right, good. Two more to go, two more to go, and then you can submit your form. Oh, we're back to the clean tidy whities now. All right, we have Greece, Brazil, England, or Germany. What do you think? Greece, Brazil, England, or Germany? Hope you're a sports fan. It helps. All right, she's coming down. She's coming down. Mm, I think this is going to be one of those things you're either going to recognize it right off the bat or you're going to be able to eliminate a couple and bring it down to a 50-50 or you're just taking a wild guess. There's no point waiting on them too long. This one will be a bit tougher though, I think. Uh, final one of the picture round, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Algeria, or Turkey. What do you think? Afghanistan, Pakistan, Algeria, or Turkey. It's a tough one, that one. Mark Hall will do a food round maybe next week. All right, folks, that is it for the picture round. Thank you very much for playing the picture round. I'll go ahead and hit next at the bottom, and it will take you on to round number five. Round number five, you'll see what kind of round it is. But before we hit that, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Well, I have a lot of questions for you, but this one I want in the comments. I would like to know where in the world are you? All right, are you here in sunny Northern Ireland? Are you? The sun always shines in NI. If you're in a part of the UK, let me know what city you're in or what town's closest to you, wherever you are. If you're anywhere outside the UK, that's we want to know that as well too. That'd be good. Let me see how far we are reaching. Last week, we hit Zimbabwe and Croatia. A couple weeks before, we were in Australia. The week before, that America. The, there are people playing from all around the world, so I'd like to know where you are. So in the comments, can you very just quickly type where you are? Don't need a street address. Don't need a zip code or a postcode. <laughs> I'm not looking for your exact address. Just the nearest town or city to you uh, where you would call home. Where's your hometown? Where are you from right now? So do that in the comments while I go ahead and get the next round ready to go. Uh, oh, we got some from down south. 
Fermanagh, Costa del White Abbey. That's a good place. I hear a lot of people holiday there. <laughs> Where else do we have? Upper West. <laughs> I've seen on the news. I've seen how fun that place is. Oh, kidding, of course. Uh, who knows? The Mighty K Ranch in Bangor, Belfast. Around the corner, don't you know? Oh, the Ferrises. The Ferrets here. Jamore, Sheffield. The Steelworkers are back. Da -na 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 -na. Give us a full Monty. Come on. Come on. Uh, Cambridge, ooh, smart ones, smart ones. Whenever you hear Cambridge, you just think of university, don't you? Don't you? Some smart ones. Uh, I'm in Continent. <laughs> funny Mark. Mark's our resident comedian, by the way, if you haven't noticed. He's terribly unfunny. All right, so let's go ahead and do round number five. Round number five. Now, round number five, I simply called it Hail the Prince, because the word prince will be a keyword that relates to every question. Some will be obvious, some will not. And it's the ones that are not, that's where you got to think, where does Prince come in? Because that might give you the answer. All right? That's all you're getting from me. That's all you're getting. No more clues. No more clues. All right, let's kick it off. Question number one. In the name of a song, what color beret, it's when we hats you pull over to one side, would you associate with the musician Prince? See where we're going? Prince, you see it? Uh, in the name of a song, what color beret would you associate with the musician Prince? Discuss. Holly, no, I don't live there. Wish I did. <laughs> Lovely place. Karen Schill. I don't know where that is. To, I'm going to look that one up. We should be in France. <laughs> yes, I know. We had we had Center Parks booked for Jackson. First time going to, to Center Parks. And then obviously it's all just cancelled or postponed. That's what it is, Stephanie. Postponed. You'll get there in the end. We'll get there in the end. <laughs> All right, question number two. Which prince is currently first in line to the throne? Which prince is currently first in line to the throne? Obviously, UK we're talking about here. So we've got Andrew, Harry, Charles, or William. Who's first in line to get that crown on the head? Barnsley. Barnsley teamer here. Question number three, question number three. We're talking about universities a second ago, weren't we? What's the name of the Ivy League University in New Jersey, USA? You have four options there. Which one do you think it is? What's the name of the Ivy League? That's top of the top uh, university in New Jersey, USA. Neighbors. Hi, Christine. <laughs> I can just look out my window and wave. <laughs> I can see you. I can't see you, but I know you're just over there. <laughs> and tell him to stop. Tell Jeff to stop putting two pounds on my fence. He's a neighbor. He's not paying. Neighbors don't pay. No pay. Neighbors. No. Christine, tell him no. Uh-uh. I'm going to flick it off next time he puts it there. <laughs> I have this wonderful neighbor, beautiful neighbor, Jeff. And he just comes and he pays me for the pub quiz every week. He puts a, puts a couple of pounds on my fence. <laughs> Going into Jackson's piggy bank. That's where that went. Straight into Jackson's piggy bank. So he thanks you. All right, let's move on. Question number four. Question number four. What prince fell in love with Snow White? What prince fell in love with Snow White? Was it Prince Eric, Prince Philip, Prince Charming, or Flynn Rider? Prince? Lindsay, no, not yet. <laughs> I got the table out the back. That's as far as it went. <laughs> I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Did you notice it missing? Is that why you're asking? No, I just moved it. All right, let's move on. Question number five. Question number five. Hopefully the silence is enough time for you to think about the answers. I mean, if you know them instantly, the silence is going to be just going to feel like it dragged out, sitting there waiting to watch paint dry. But I, I take these gaps so that people who don't know the answer can discuss with their family members or friends, whoever it is with them in their own house, um, or maybe on their Skype and on FaceTime to try and get the answer. So uh, bear with us. If you're one of those ones that your brain operates 100 miles an hour and you're just getting the answers like that, you're still going to have to be patient because there's people like me who brain doesn't work like that. It's more Windows 95. All right, let's move on. Uh, question number five. 
What boxer, you into boxing? What boxer was famous for his random out of nowhere uppercuts and fought his last fight in 2002? Your options are Nassim Hamid, Mike Tyson, Joe Calzaghe, or Barry McGuigan. What boxer was famous for his random out of nowhere uppercuts? They just, they just flew and no one even knew where they came from uh, and fought his very last fight in 2002. Who do you think that was? Uh, Ashling, I said Snow White. Yes. What prince fell in love with Snow White? That was number four. All right, moving on. Question number six. Question number six. What prince moved to Beverly Hills in 1990? Was it Prince Akeem, Prince Humperdinck, the Fresh Prince, or Axel Foley? What prince moved to Beverly Hills in 1990? All right, folks, time for the final question of our all hail the Prince round. Question number eight, complete the title of this 2010 movie, Prince of Persia, the sands of what is it? Life, Egypt, time, or the pharaohs? Complete the title of this 2010 movie, Prince of Persia, the sands of what? Good film. All right, folks, when you're done with that, go ahead and click next at the bottom. It will take you over to round number six. Oh, I'm going to read out question number six. Sorry, I just spotted that there. Question number six, if you haven't hit next already. What's the name of the charity? Yeah, I've skipped one. My bad. Totally my fault. Question number six. What's the name of the charity that, quote, helps change young lives? My bad, I went straight from five to number seven. I'm sorry about that. What's the name of the charity that, quote, helps fight young lives? Then question number seven was what prince moved to Beverly Hills. And number eight, complete the title of the 2010 film. My fault. Thank you, Charlene. Coming and keep me right with that. I just spotted it there. You missed six. You missed six, 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 six. Very sixy. My bad. I apologize. My bad. My bad. All right, folks, it is time. Uh, we're going to move on to round number six now. Hit next at the bottom. You should be sitting at round number six. But before we do, very quickly, just want to bring up two things. Uh, in fact, just, we'll just do the one thing. Uh, prizes. We were talking about prizes earlier. And on Facebook today, earlier today, uh, yesterday, I put a poll up even saying, what do you think about prizes in the pub quiz? Should we do something for the top three scoring teams? What should we do? Uh, well, I can tell you after reading all of your comments and the poll as well was 70% against having prizes for the top three. That's a pretty good margin or a pretty bad margin, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but the comments that you guys were coming up with, they all seem to have the same theme and that prizes are great, but it would be better if they were dished out randomly to everyone who participates in the pub quiz. So that is what I've decided to do, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of this pub quiz, once you've submitted your final answer sheet, I will have your email address, uh, and I will then pick through one of those email addresses. It'll all be sitting there. I'm just going to spin it and go, you, and I'm going to take a note of copy of that, and I'll try and correlate your score to where you are in the pub quiz. I'll need to know your name in the pub quiz, and the only way I'm going to be able to put your name to this email address is for you to put your score up on here when you finally get it on the comments. You're gonna have to type your score and put your team name up as well if you want. That's always good to get a bit of credit with your team name, but you're gonna have to put your score at the end of this round. Whenever you hit submit, you'll get your score. You'll get it. As soon as you answer the final question, hit submit your score. There it is. Out of 58, what score you got. Then put that in the comments. Just, just Even just that number. That's all you need to do. Just that number. But if you want to type in, hey, we got, and whatever the score is, you want to put your team name in there, that would be fantastic. But I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose three. I'm going to choose three different email addresses and correlate them to your scores every week. And once I get those matched up, so you need to put your score in the comments or else I'll not be able to match you up. Um, the three prizes are going to be, one of you is going to receive a download link for all of my albums. 26 of them. Download them for free. They're yours. That's, that's 
25 quid on eBay I charge for that. They're all 26 albums. It's a very good value. So go to eBay if you if you haven't won it, all right? If you want to own all my albums, 26, go to eBay, click them. You get every single one of them and a whole lot more. But one of the prizes in the pub quiz is going to be that link. It's yours. One use, download it. It's there. It's yours. You can share it once you download it. Two other prizes have been donated to us, all of us, by the two of the venues that I work in. One of them is Betty Black's in Bangor, the wonderful, the legend that is Michael Brennan. He has given me uh, four cocktails, a round of four cocktails to give away every week, every week. Uh, obviously, he can't be redeemed until the bar opens again, but I will take your name. I'll put it on a list. I'll forward it to him. He'll start creating this big list of all these people, and all you have to do is bring down some ID and say, Michael, hi, I'm such and such. I won four, four cocktails in Danny D's online quiz. He'll check your name. There you are. Scratch you off. Four cocktails are yours. Just come down on a Saturday afternoon and join me. Uh, although you could probably redeem them any time, if I'm honest. But I'd like you to come down on a Saturday afternoon and join me because I DJ there from 4 p.m. every Saturday once this lockdown's over. 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 So that's the first prize. The second prize is a 20-pound drinks voucher from the Parlor Bar in Belfast, up near Queen's University. I do a pub quiz there on a Thursday. I do their bingo nights, their student bingo nights on a Wednesday. And I'll be going back to those once this lockdown is over. So it's a 20-pound drinks voucher you can spend on anything you want from behind the bar. That is a prize that they have given me to give away every single week. So there you go. It's a great prize fund. I may send you all some messages once I find the three and ask you which one you prefer, uh, and then you can tell me because if you live in Belfast you're going to want the Parlor one if you live in Bangor you're going to want the Betty's one <laughs> and then if you don't live anywhere then the link is probably going to do you but uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll work that out I'll, 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 I haven't actually thought that through but I think maybe asking you which one you might like you're probably all going to want the same one if that's the case I'll just have to choose randomly all right folks so there you go we have prizes so thank you very much to Michael Brennan at Betty Black's and thank you very much to my boss Bosco and everyone at Wine Inns up there at the Parlor Bar so thank you very much for donating those prizes and thank you to Danny for donating that prize <laughs> alright folks let's do it round number 6 we've only got 2 rounds left to go so let's go ahead and get through them oh incidentally give me your thoughts on this if you think those prizes, if you think that's a great way to do it, if you if you agree with me, let me know in the comments. Please just say, yep, great idea. Or say, no, I think it'd be better to do it. Please give me some feedback. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a yes. Or give me, it would maybe be better if you, whatever you think regarding the prizes. If you think there's a better idea or another better strategy, I want to try and make sure people get difference each week. But then again, there's always possibilities. Since it's random, you could win a prize two weeks in a row. It could happen. But give me some ideas. Give me some uh, any feedback at all regarding what I've decided for the prizes, whether you think it's a good idea or you can maybe tweak it a bit in the comments. Do that. All right, folks, it's time for round number six. It's the human body, ladies and gentlemen, the human body. If you have someone who is a medical student or a nurse or a doctor on your family team, then you are flying. This one's for you. But remember, it is multiple choice, so you can just take a mad guess. All right, let's kick it off. Round number six. Here we go. What is the common name for the trachea? What is the common name for the trachea? Is it nasal passage, windpipe, Adam's apple, or tonsils? Thanks for your feedback already. Good, good, good. Random act of kindness. That's what it is. It's a random act of kindness. Question number two, question number two. Where in the body would you find the radius and the ulna bones? Shin, neck, arm, or hip? Where in the body would you find the radius and the ulna bones? Question number three, question number three. What would a doctor examine with an otoscope? What would a doctor examine with an otoscope? Is it ear, eyes, throat, or your butt? <laughs> no, in your end of, sorry, sorry, carried away, carried away. <laughs> Mark, no, Mark Hall, no. All right, let's move on. Question number four. Question number four. Uh, this one's a 
you have saturated or unsaturated. So let's check these ones out. Um, which type of fat increases the cholesterol level in the blood more? Now they both increase cholesterol level in the blood, but one of them does it more than the other. That's what we want to know from you. Which type of fat increases the cholesterol level in the blood more, saturated or unsaturated? All right, let's move on. Question number five, question number five. What does the letter R stand for in CPR? Now, you know CPR is about saving someone's life, thump, 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 breathing, breathing into their mouths and stuff. But what does the R stand for in CPR? Revive, resuscitate, regain, or resuscitation. Stephanie would like me to repeat question number two. Where in the body would you find the radius and the ulna bones? That was question number two. Can you hear Jackson in the background? <laughs> family quiz, family house. All right, let's move on. Question number six, question number six. What does the abbreviation IVF relate to? So what's it part of? What's it, what's it about? Is it something to do with heart attacks, blood clots, pregnancy, or breathing difficulties? What does the abbreviation IVF, that's Indigo Victor Foxtrot, IVF, what does that relate to? Heart attacks, blood clots, pregnancy, or breathing difficulties? Katie says it froze. You need number five. Oh, we're freezing again. Well, I don't understand why it's freezing. I do apologize. I have no idea why. Uh, I know that I'm recording this. Um, and I'm wondering if the, the, the recording of it that I'm taking to then put on YouTube later on freezes as well. I'm going to have to go and have a look at that. be terrible if it did. Hopefully it didn't. If it didn't freeze, then it's not my phone. It's something out there in the interwebs. But um, let's... Uh, Someone's looking for question number five again. So question number five was, what does the R stand for in CPR? What does the letter R stand for in the acronym or abbreviation, whatever you want to call it, CPR? That was question number five. Other people saying it's not freezing for them, so it could be your internet. I don't know. There's no way to know. No way to know. All right, we're going to move on. Question number seven. Question number seven. Hopefully I haven't missed out any this time. Question number seven, 50-50. Uh, Do arteries carry blood to the heart or away from the heart? Do arteries carry blood to the heart or away from the heart? Now remember, this is just a generalization. All right, we're not getting too specific. I know there's a right and there's a wrong answer, but you know, this is kind of general knowledge on the human body. So don't go too finely down into it. I know there are some doctors out there and they go, well, actually, so uh, just generally speaking, do arteries carry blood to the heart or away from the heart? There you go, Mark. There's your question number six, been typed up for you. <laughs> Everyone who is freezing must be on sky like us. Yeah, some people having connection issues, some people not. I have no idea why. But uh, thankfully, some people are typing up the questions again. Remember, if you ever see someone calling out for a number, if you want to type it up, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, folks, time for the final question, number eight. Uh, your options are 23, 33, or 43. This may be a mad guess for you, but if you're a physiotherapist, you might know. Obviously, if you're a doctor, you might know. Uh, but I wish you the best of luck. If not, take a mad guess at it. How many vertebrae bones does the average adult have in their body? So the spine, how many bones, how many pieces, how many pieces that made up from? 23, 33, or 43 pieces. How many vertebrae bones does the average adult have in their body? 23, 33, or 43? So that's just all of them, all right, all of them. All right, folks, there you go. That is the end of round number six. Doesn't look like anyone else is asking for any questions to be read out, so that's brilliant. 
So let's go ahead and move on. We've only got one round left to go um, before we read this one out. Just a couple of things I want to mention. When we're done with this round, your options at the bottom is not going to be next. It's going to be submit. And I'm going to need you to do that as quickly as you can. I will wait a, uh, a few seconds and then I'll have to do a 10 second countdown. And then I have to click lock out on the laptop. And that's basically when I have received all of your answers and I get them. Uh, if, if you do it after, there's a chance I might not get it. Some people have sent me through. He says, well, I sent it through. If, it, if it's after, after this deadline, then I might not receive it. It does happen. So make sure you click submit before I get to the end of counting down to 10 after this round. Um, you'll get your answers then and there. Just click on the button saying view score. The highest score is 58. Uh, you'll see where you landed. Make sure you type in the comments your score just so I can associate a score with your name. Uh, if you want to put your team name down again, that'd be great as well. I'd like to see that. And then in about 20 minutes after the pub quiz, I will release the top three scoring teams. I'll release the names of the people that won and I'll give some stats. How many people played tonight? Where was the furthest one away according to what was written down here? So you give about 20 minutes or so to put that together and then come back to Facebook um, and you'll have the answers and you'll know who's going to win too. You know who's going to win. All right, so it's time for the final round. It's our TV and film round, ladies and gentlemen. TV and film, always a good one. People watch TV, people watch TV and film. That's all we've been doing <laughs> for the how many weeks now? Oh, the lockdown, gotta love it. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Eventually it will be over. Stay at home and save lives. All right, so this is it. Round number seven, TV and film. Question number one. What film does the phrase Matt Damon, you know, Matt Damon, but said stretched out. What film does the phrase Matt Damon come from? Did it come from Born Supremacy, Goodwill Hunting, Team America World Police, or Stuck on You? Great comedy, that last one. All right, Danny Pat has just joined us. Danny, basically at 8 o'clock, I go live. Uh, and the answer the, the answer sheet, which you're going to need, will be in a link directly below the, the live stream. So you'll need two, two phones or two devices, one for the answer sheet, one for the live stream. And you need to be here about 7.50 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Uh, but if you wait, uh, I know you've just joined at the end, but if you wait till I finish uh, and I'm done, Facebook will then post the video right from the start. You can watch it right from the very beginning again. Just do that, open up the answer sheet and watch this video right from the very start. It'll be on YouTube later on tonight as well too. If you go to my DJ Danny D 106 YouTube channel, it will be there and uh, the link to the answer sheet will be in the description of the video as it will be on Facebook as well too for a while. So uh, yeah, you can still play along. Just wait till I'm done and then start from the start. <laughs> but next week, be here, 7.50 p.m. All right, where are we? Question number two. What actor plays the character Frasier? Did you ever watch Frasier? I loved it. Every episode, tears, laughter, brilliant TV series. Uh, what actor played the character Frasier? Was it Ted Danson, Kelsey Grammer, Bob Bulldog Briscoe, or Kevin Spacey? Yes, Jackson? Do you want to come over here and say hello to everyone? Say hi. You froze? Oh, it's frozen? Okay, thank you very much. You go back in and help mommy. You keep watching. Thank you very much. Close the door. Close the door, buddy. Thank you. Oh, we man. So it's frozen again. Oh, no. If it has frozen, just put up what number questions you've missed and I'll read them out again if it's frozen on you. We're on the TV and film round, round number seven, the final round of tonight's pub quiz and I'm about to read out question number three. Question number three. What was the 2018 Maze Runner film called? You remember the Maze Runner films? Was it Death Cure? Was it Scorch Trials? Or was it just Maze Runner? All right, moving on. Question number four. Did you ever watch Sex in the City? Did you? Well, then just hand the answer sheet now to your wife because she probably did. <laughs> All right, Sex in the City question now. Carrie Bradshaw. Carrie Bradshaw, star of the show. She married Mr. Big in the end. Sorry, spoilers if you haven't watched it. Um, but what was the name of the character she once dated that was a carpenter? Remember, he made tables and chairs with his bare hands, man. Was that person's name Alexander? Was it Jack Berger or John or 
Aiden. All four of them. She had relationships with all four of them, but which one was the carpenter? Sex in the City question. Carrie Bradshaw married Mr. Big, but what was the name of the character she once dated that was a carpenter? Alexander, Jack Berger, John, or Aiden? Hey, Brian, you're late to the game. <laughs> it starts at 7.50 p.m. Be here next Tuesday, 7.50. You can play along. Or just wait till I'm finished, and then you can play it from the start. All right, moving on. Question number five. Question number five. We're almost done. In the TV series, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, was that not an awesome series? Tell me you watched How I Met Your Mother. If you didn't, get your coat. Uh, in the TV series, How I Met Your Mother, Barney Stinson has a code. What's it called? It's called The What Code. The What Code. We have lads, male, bro, or sex. Not say that again. Family show. Family show. PG-13. <laughs> Michael is looking for question number three. I'm going to do that very quickly. Question number three. What was the 2018 Maze Runner film called? You have three options. Three options. Question number six. Your options are just numbers. Five, six, seven, or eight. This is going to be a hard one. You either know it or you don't. How many seasons of Sons of Anarchy were there? Oh, that is a hard one unless you watched it. How many seasons of Sons of Anarchy were there? Five, six, seven, or eight. Mad guess if you don't know. Question number seven. Question number seven. You have to have watched this series. You had to. If you didn't watch any other ones, you had to have watched this one. In Two and a Half Men. Men, 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 manly men. <laughs> Come on. You had to watch Two and a Half Men. In Two and a Half Men, Charlie's beachfront home is in California. We know this. But where in California? Is it Malibu, Santa Monica, Long Beach, or Santa Cruz? I have a slight feeling I'm given too many answers. Am I given too many answers? Did you, is that how many answers are in the answer sheet? I have a slight feeling I dropped that down to three, but maybe I thought I was going to bring it down to three and didn't. Because I was going to, I thought maybe it was a hard question. I was going to knock one off the end. If I did, uh, and there's only three there, well then you can ignore the one that isn't there that I've said. I just, it's something in the back of my mind. We spidey sense is going. I thought I knocked one of those off. I actually thought I did it for a few of them. Knowing me, I just thought about it, and you have four options. All right, folks, it's almost time for the final question. It's almost time for the final question before I do. Remember, too many. Yeah, too many. I knew it, Lindsay. I knew it. I thought I could have swore and just forgot to take them away here. So, yeah, ignore anything that I said to you that you didn't see. I simplified them down just to make it a bit easier. Because if you haven't watched the series, at least a one in three shot's better than that. So, my bad. Sorry about that. All right, so... Before I read out this final question, remember, you only got 10 seconds to submit your answer sheet and you'll get your score then and there. I need you to post your score in the comments below. You're going to have to post it up there and put your team name in there if you want as well too. Um, the winning teams will be posted in about 20 minutes along with who has won the prizes, the random prizes. Uh, give me 20, 30 minutes at the most because now I've got prizes to deal with. Um, and I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'm just going to allocate you with prizes or see which ones you would like. I don't know. I haven't done that. I'm going to sit in front of the computer and work out what am I going to do. Um, then I would like some feedback from you, from comments. If you think it's going too fast, it's going too slow, you'd like maybe a bit faster or just chill out a little bit more. Uh, give me some feedback, please. I'd very much love to. And don't forget that PayPal link. I'd be very, very grateful if you fired me a pound or something. Anything at all, to be honest. It doesn't matter what it is. Every little bit is appreciated and it encourages me to, to keep doing the pub quiz. So thank you very much. From my family to yours, if you support me in doing this, then I will keep coming back every week and do it for you. And I hope it's bringing your families together and keeping you safe as well, too. All right, folks, this is it. It's the final question. It's always going to be a geeky, nerdy sci-fi one because that's what I like. That's what I like. It's who I am in my pub quizzes. So the last TV and film question will always be a geeky, nerdy sci-fi one, but hopefully an easy one. You ready for this? Uh, it's just number seven, eight, nine, or ten. In the last three Star Wars films, most recent three that we've just watched, 
Uh, what's the name of the droid we got introduced to that rolls around on a ball? Going beep, 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 beep. His name is BB, and then it's a number. What is that number? Is it 7, 8, 9, or 10? In the last three Star Wars films, what's the name of the droid we got introduced to that rolls around on a ball? Kind of white and orange, and he just rolls around, and his head swivels along the top, and he leans this way, and he leans that way. Cutest little thing. Uh, so yeah, it's BB what? 7, 8, 9, or 10. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. You're going to get a 10-second countdown to submit your answers and then put your scores in the comments uh, below and let me know how well you did. And I'll post up the results. Who got the top three scoring teams? Who's going to win some prizes? I'll give you some stats as well to how many people were playing and from where the furthest one away was from once I do a bit of research on some of the names that came up because I don't know where they are. Uh, so, there you go. Thank you very much for playing. This will be on YouTube later. If you've been watching on YouTube, thanks for joining. Well, and Oh, oh, ja Jackson, yes? I it's past my bedtime. <laughs> Is it past your bedtime? Aw, wee man, wee man. <laughs> my work is keeping my wee man up. Oh, they just make your heart melt, wouldn't it? I love that wee man so much. So I, I, I never knew what it would be like to love children until you have one of your own. Before that, I was like, yeah, kids. Oh, it's nice. Here you go. You can have it back now. But until you have your own, it's just like, well, it's a love you never knew you'd ever have. I'm sure a lot of you out there realize that. <sighs> okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. So we're back. So thank you very much for playing. You ready for the final countdown? 10 seconds to hit submit. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, a half, a quarter, and, and, and. There we go. That's it. That's it. You're locked out now. You're locked out. All your privileges have been revoked. I will not get your email address, so you're not going to get any clues and emails to me. And if you give me a false email address, we'll then buoy on you. But you can go ahead and hit the click, click, the click on the link again for the answer sheet and submit a whole new one. So, folks, thank you very much for playing. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next Tuesday doing it all over again. I'll see you guys in about 20, 30 minutes on Facebook on my Danny D page, and I'll post up the results. Thank you very much for playing. Peace out.